The JBL Bar 500 is a 5.1 channel soundbar with a whopping 590 watts of total power output. In this review, you're seeing how it compares to some of its rivals and indeed to see if it's actually worth its price tag, because at the time of filming and in the UK, it can be found for £500. Now to kick off this video, I would like to talk about its design, and here the main soundbar unit itself is nice and sleek and slender. The dimensions will be on your screen right now, and in comparison to my 55 inch TV, it actually fits pretty well. Furthermore, it doesn't obscure any of the lower portion of my screen either, which is certainly appreciated. Of course, if you do not have a cabinet, you can wall mount it as well. Now, it's only worth considering here in terms of the overall space that's required is the wireless 10-inch subwoofer. Indeed, it is humongous, but thankfully, it can be placed to the left or right of the soundbar, and I suspect most people getting the JBL Bar 500 will be able to accommodate it in their setup. But it's just something I thought to highlight in this review. So moving swiftly on, let's talk about interacting with the soundbar, and here there are a few physical buttons found at the top of it, which are certainly appreciated in comparison to touch-sensitive buttons, which does seem to be a nonsensical recent trend. Now if you do want to control it from afar, you also have got a bundled remote. And better still, when you are controlling the soundbar, you'll be able to see what you're adjusting on the fly with a small little LED indicator that's found at the frontal profile of the soundbar, therefore making it easy to know what you're changing. Now better still, JBL have included the JBL One app, and here you have got a further degree of customization, such as adding the music streaming services, or for example, adjusting the EQ, which is certainly appreciated. Now for you to connect up to the app, the soundbar must support some form of wireless transmission technology, and indeed it does. It's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, whereby the former will want to be used sparingly because it's limited to the lowest quality SBC codec, which is quite disappointing. Thankfully, due to Wi-Fi inclusion, you have got access to Google Chromecast, Apple AirPlay, and also Alexa multi-room services, all of which are certainly appreciated and allows you to get much higher audio fidelity over a wireless transmission. Now, aside from wireless transmission, you have also got wired connectivity, whereby if you do want to connect it up to your television, you have got an optical and HDMI port. The latter also does support the eARC standard, therefore giving you uncompressed Dolby Atmos metadata. Now it's worth considering that if you do have an older television, it will still feed through Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital or indeed Dolby Surround, so it's not something to overly worry about, just that you might not get the utmost of this soundbar. Now elsewhere, it is rather disappointing to see that there is only a singular HDMI input, and while it does feed through 4K Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, it would have been great to see two or three HDMI inputs for those people who have, let's say, modern day consoles, Blu-ray players, or indeed set-top boxes, therefore giving the overall versatility at this price point. It's not a complaint I would have if you were going to be spending a lot less on this soundbar, given the price point that I'm reviewing it at, it's somewhat unacceptable. So with all of that out of the way, let's get on to an audio demo. Now I appreciate it's not going to be ideal over YouTube using my microphones, but it will give you somewhat of a taster as to how it performs. First off, we'll be going to Priya J's track, which is titled Like Me, and then we'll be going on to my piece, the camera, while presenting the Kia Nero EV on Totally EV. Do check out the annotations because I'll be toggling through the smart mode and also the pure voice functionalities. suspect most people will agree to say that it's a massive improvement over its predecessor the E Nero which didn't look too shabby in its own right but here it does look a lot more modern and that's thanks to its frontal profile whereby you have got the bonnet headlight and even the bumper design that all work in unison as for the side you've got 17 inch alloys giving it that slightly snazzier look 
As for the rear, it's not too bad either, although some will assimilate the taillight design with a Volvo or indeed the old Ford Fiesta. Now with the audio demos out of the way, I would like to point out that the smart mode and the pure voice functionalities are enabled every single time you power on the soundbar, which does seem a little bit cumbersome, but hopefully you'll agree with me that actually both of these technologies enabled does give you a far better audio reproduction, so therefore I've got no inherent complaints, although still the option would have been great for some consumers out there. Now in terms of the audio setup of the soundbar, the main soundbar unit outputs 290 watts of power, and that is because it has four racetrack drivers and three 0.75 inch tweeters. The rest of the 300 watts is delivered from the wireless 10 inch subwoofer, and indeed over here gives you a frequency range that goes all the way down to 35 hertz, and due to the main soundbar unit goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So while all of this is very much interesting, how does it actually perform? So let me get onto my subjective opinion. And first off, let's talk about that sub bass extension. Now here it is very much pronounced, although it is cut off at 35 hertz. So you're getting a lot of quantity, but you're not getting that much quality. Here in comparison to some more premium audio solutions out there on the market, they extend far lower to around let's say 27 or even 32 hertz, and therefore giving you a much better low end rumble, which can certainly be felt if you're listening to EDM, DMB tracks, or for example, watching some of your favorite action movies. Now in terms of the amount of quantity, in terms of the sub bass tones, it is certainly felt. Specifically if you dial up the bass level, whereby there's five different increments to choose from, you can really get the house shaking. And I'm not kidding you over here, my door was actually rattling at level five, specifically when I cranked it up a little bit. Now as for the mid bass tones, they're actually done really well. The overall presence and also the quantity is all perfect, at least in my opinion, and of course to my own music tastes and listening tastes. Now you can adjust the bass EQ through the app, which I showcased before, and in this respect I actually took a few notches off that bass EQ in order to give me a little bit more of a well-rounded sound signature. Now this does actually bring me on to its mid-range tones, and here they're a little bit pushed back, but thankfully due to the pure voice functionality and also a healthy boost in the mid-range tones, in other words through the EQ, you can actually get a pretty forward sounding mid-range and therefore vocals such as let's say from Priya J do come out pretty well. Now as for the highs, similarly I did add quite a bit of an EQ over here to get a little bit of that extra zing and therefore trying to work those three 0.75 inch tweeters. Indeed over here I did feel that the zingy nature was not overdone and therefore didn't seem fatiguing, at least not to my ears, which tail off at around 16 to 17 kilohertz. As such over here through the main frequency range I actually had no inherent complaints given the price point of the JBL Bar 500. Now while the Bar 500 is very competent across the frequency range, what is a major letdown is its overall soundstage reproduction. I just felt a little bit underwhelmed while listening to this soundbar and comparing it to some of its rivals namely from the likes of Samsung. Here, ironically, the Samsung group own their own soundbars, JBL and also Harman Kardon. And in this respect, I felt that the Bar 500 just didn't give me that sort of room filling or cinematic experience that I would be able to attain given the fact that it actually also supports the heightened metadata of Dolby Atmos. Speaking of which, let's get on to a little bit of a Dodger demo, and here I'll be playing Transformers Age of Extinction, and I'll be toggling on and off Dolby Atmos, and also the Dolby Atmos effect, which can be accessed through the remote control. Who are they? Who are you? 
Who are you calling baby? Now with the audio demo out of the way, I should just reiterate that here the Dolby Atmos effect and also the actual native use of Dolby Atmos is certainly appreciated. Although here, the bar 500 yet again limits the overall experience that one can attain, and that's because it does not have any sort of upward firing physical drivers, which is quite baffling given the price point it comes in at, and furthermore some of the competition. Here, the likes of, let's say, the JBL Bar 9.1, which I appreciate was a much more premium soundbar not too long ago, has actually been heavily discounted. And thus, at the time of filming, there's actually very little differences between the two soundbars, at least in terms of price. But in terms of the audio experience, well, the Bar 9.1 is going to completely obliterate the Bar 500. Aside from JBL, the likes of Samsung also offer some really competent solutions, from the likes of the Q800B or Q800A, both of which are giving you a much better Dolby Atmos experience due to their driver configurations. And as such, it just brings me on to my verdict. The JBL Bar 500 isn't a bad soundbar. It actually does really well across the frequency range and has got some of the usual features that are built in. However, when it comes to the overall soundstage reproduction, you're going to be left a little bit disheartened. Equally, the subwoofer, while it has an enormous size, doesn't actually extend lower than 35Hz, which is yet again quite disheartening. So as a result, I would suggest looking at some of the alternatives that I've previously reviewed down in the description below. And I'd be curious to know what you make of the Bar 500 in the comments section below. Now if you've liked this independent detail review and want to see more from myself, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which are greatly appreciated and allows me to continue delivering independent reviews like this one. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.